All right, so we walked by and we saw this thing. It's obviously not a multi-rotor, but it is really, really cool. Why don't you tell the folks at home what we're looking at? So this is our uh, Boomerang Flight Altitude Control System. It attaches to a standard latex weather balloon. Okay, so up here we have the neck spindle. This is where the latex balloon attaches to the uh, Boomerang uh, Altitude Control System. It's attached to the rest of the flight train via a V-clamp, which is this separation mechanism here. Now again, this is 3D printed. When it comes time to terminate the flight, the boomerang altitude control system separates from the next spindle. Down below we have what we call the control module, and that includes our motor assembly, which is the, the geared mechanisms to control the, the poppet actuation. We have the primary flight control board, which includes all the, uh, the sensors that we have for the flight. It also takes care of the GPS stream coming in along with the uh, communication system. We have a backup flight control unit, which is purely responsible for monitoring the health of the uh, primary flight control computer. In the event that there's a failure of the primary flight control computer, the backup terminates the flight uh, within a certain amount of, of time. It also takes care of all of our onboard data recording. Also has uh, two hot wire cutters to separate that V-clamp I showed earlier. Down below is what we call the inflation module, and this is uh, pretty unique to our system. It allows a user to inflate the, the balloon with an attached payload, so there's not any last minute fumbling trying to connect lines and other time mechanisms. Down below is the actual payload section, and it's built around a 1U CubeSat form factor. This is a fairly standard uh, form factor for small satellites now being launched by university groups, amateur groups, and other users. And then finally down below is the baluster section. And we have the ability to vent gas out to maintain a constant altitude, or we can vent some more gas out to descend. We drop some weight to go back up. So unlike normal uh, balloon flights that you see with rubber balloons, it just doesn't go up to altitude and burst. You can float along at any altitude you desire, basically between 50 feet and 100,000 feet, depending on balloon. And what we've got here is a radio-controlled balloon. We've done some work with hot air balloons, and there obviously the pilots control it by you know, adding and subtracting heat. You've got that same capability, which to a certain extent gives you the ability to maneuver by using wind in different directions. Uh, you're absolutely right. It, it, we have a uh, mission control uh, station that has a, a GUI, so you can see all the sensor data that we have on board the system. Uh, it also allows you to control in real time the valve position to go up or down uh, the baluster. Um, and, and we also have the ability to turn on and off payloads. Uh, so if you have a camera that you want to turn on at a, s a specific time. Um, and we also have a parachute on board so, so we can terminate the flight and come down via parachute. So seen here is the mission control software for the Boomerang system. It's got a variety of different capabilities with it. On the left-hand side here, you have the different sensors that plot on the window. Right now, we're looking at the pressure trends that have been occurring in the building since we started up this morning. We can also look at the internal temperature as well as the internal pressure of the balloon. I guess I could ask Mark to squeeze it and you would see a slight variation in this. It's measuring down in the tens of pascals. Across the top, we can configure a variety of different uh, settings that are stored in EEPROM on board the primary flight control computer, including the loss of calm fail-safe parameters, so you can set how long before the system cuts down if you lose radio communication. We can control the valve. We can also dump ballast with it. And then there's user configurable payload interface buttons. It gives you some idea of the remaining ballast and uh, lift gas, as well as it computes the, the distance and bearing to the balloon and um, shortly um, the azimuth and elevation so you can point a directional antenna better at it. So right now we are uh, in pre-production, so we're taking pre-production orders. We expect our uh, non-beta version to be available in March. We're running two competitions right now. Uh, one, if you have a payload and want to risk it on one of our test flights, we're more than willing to, uh, to take a payload to altitude. Um, and then the second competition, which we're really excited about, is if you have a unique application, whether you're an individual, a university group, uh, or even another company, we would like to see what uh, the greater community uh, has, uh, has some ideas. Oh, it's a great approach, great approach. Um, okay, well, guys, thanks so much for, for sharing your, your stuff with us. I'm, I'm, I'm totally geeking out on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, from AMA Expo 2015, Ontario, California, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. <laughs>